Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi there, good morning. It is Monday. That would be October 24th. Thanks for joining us and welcome back, Mark. Thank you. Good to be back here in San Antonio, South Texas. Yeah, thank you. So you're, you're bringing in the wind tonight. I'm bringing, <laughs> I tried to bring in some fall weather. I did the best I could. I don't know how much I'm actually going to get accomplished, but I did bring a, a few showers out there, didn't I, Joe? Yeah, good you job, did. Mark. Yeah. You did. Good work, my friend. Uh, yes, we have some showers this morning. We're going to get another chance for some storms coming up tonight. These are great chances. We're not going to get a ton of rain out of it, but it is nice that, that we've got a little bit of rain coming down this morning. It's made for some slick roads, as RJ will tell you here in just a second. But uh, you can see the showers are starting to push east now, and we've still got cloudy skies. We should eventually get some clearing, I think, this afternoon, too. So it's going to be kind of two rounds that we'll be dealing with. And yes, these showers are pushing now into our eastern county. So places like Luling, Gonzales, down towards Howitzville uh, and over towards Quero, you're starting to see the showers at this hour. And uh, let's take you outside. Kind of uh, gloomy, at least at the moment. We've got uh, cloudy skies and still some wet roads as we look at uh, 410 there. Damp, cloudy, mild this morning. We'll get some clearing this afternoon. Then we'll watch for some storms tonight. Some of those could be strong. That's one thing we do have to consider as we get into tonight and then tomorrow gusty winds at this point i think we could see some gusts up to 50 miles per hour tomorrow morning so that'll be something you really got to watch out for halloween decorations if you don't tie them down or you don't bring them in they're going to be in your neighbor's yard or even further away so just a heads up 72 degrees right now a little bit of rain coming down dew point is at 70 south southeast julie winds at about 10 miles per hour here's your case at 12 hour forecast 75 at 10 o'clock we'll keep some showers in the forecast then we start to get some clearing by midday we're all the way up to 88 by four or five o'clock and then the rain chances start to come back into play this evening and especially as we get into tonight to tonight as we said we'll take another look at that we'll look at the forecast another chance of rain in seven day that's all coming up in just a bit let's get over to rj now some slick roads out there my friend yeah, Justin, things have actually picked up throughout the morning. As you mentioned, wet roads out there causing several incidences. Want to start here with a look at Transguide, US 98 I-35. Things looking pretty smooth there, but let's go ahead and take you to our big map here. And you can see that there are several accidents that our maps are showing right now. Now, one good thing is that several of these, especially out there in 1604, are pretty much off the highway. So these are reported on our maps, but do not appear to be causing any major backups or any major problems at this moment. The one I've been following throughout the morning is this crash here at US 90 eastbound at Nogalitos. Uh, things have cleared up there. I was looking at Transguide. Things have officially cleared up. Our map's still showing that there is still obviously a significant backup as those crews took care of, it, took care of business earlier this morning. And then this other crash here, uh, I-35 northbound at Bamsey. Again, things causing a mess right here because this is where 35 and 410 intersect. So you can see that it's caused some backup there, especially in the northbound lanes of 35 at Bamsey. So just be careful if you're still headed out into those areas. One other quick look at Transguide this morning, 281 South, Loop 410 West. Things moving pretty smooth. Again, it's been very gloomy out there, wet roads, and crews are out there taking care of several incidents right now. So just be careful if you see any of those emergency vehicles. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, RJ. Here's today's 9 at 9. A 30-year-old man is charged with capital murder after police say he killed two employees at a Dallas hospital over the weekend. The suspect was visiting his girlfriend who had just given birth to their son. According to the arrest warrant, the suspect accused his girlfriend of cheating and became upset. He threatened to kill anyone who came into their hospital room and that's when the two employees were shot. A hospital police officer was able to take down the accused gunman. A criminal trial against the Trump Organization is scheduled to begin in New York today. The company is charged with an alleged tax fraud scheme that spanned about 15 years. The longtime CFO, Alan Weiselberg, pleaded guilty to 15 related felony counts in August. Those pleas and his testimony are returned for a lighter sentence. We are just about two weeks away from the crucial midterm elections. A new ABC News Ipsos poll shows Republicans holding an advantage over Democrats on key issues like the state of the economy and inflation. In the Senate, Republicans only need one seat to gain a majority, and several key races are tight, like in Georgia, Ohio, and Nevada. The polls are open here in Bear County and surrounding areas to cast your vote early for the midterm elections. The polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. today through Friday. For a list of polling locations and hours for this weekend and next week, just head over to KSAT.com 
We also have a sample ballot for Bear County voters to look at before they head out. Rishi Sunak has been chosen as the new British Prime Minister less than a week after Liz Truss stepped down from the position. She is Britain's shortest serving Prime Minister, only serving six weeks in office. Some recent earnings reports may not be enough to help jumpstart the markets here in the U.S. Fewer companies are hitting investors' earnings expectations in the third quarter. Some companies that have reported bright spots in their earnings have also warned about high inflation and rising interest rates. Higher prices have also led some companies to get more creative about how they're doing business. According to the Wall Street Journal, Verizon and AT&T have increased the prices on some of their cell phone plans. And appliance maker Whirlpool has slashed production by 35 percent. More workers are taking advantage of free and mainly online college programs offered by companies like Target, Lowe's and Walmart. USA Today says these programs are aimed at retaining frontline workers and offering ways to advance. But critics say the programs might gloss over issues of low pay and inconsistent schedules for employees. The Houston Astros are heading back to the World Series. They swept the New York Yankees for the American League Championship last night. Final score for Game 4 was 6-5. to five. They now face the Philadelphia Phillies on Friday for Game 1 of this year's World Series. And that's today's 9 at 9. In your other morning headlines, a teacher was accused of leaving the Robb Elementary School door open, finally speaks out while she is trembling. And a pretty fair wedding making history in Dallas. David Sears is here with all these stories. Hello, Mr. Sears. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. And Thank believe you. it or not, we'll start your Monday with something amazing. What we're going to tell you about at the, the fair, at Texas State Fair, yeah. has never happened before in 128 year history, which is very unusual when you think about it. We'll get to that in just a second, but let's start with this. We're gonna start in Uvalde, and for the first time since being accused of leaving the side door of Rob Elementary propped open, allowing the shooter free access, the teacher, Amy Marin, is now talking. She was accused by DPS of propping open the door even before a full investigation was completed. The head of DPS eventually admitted that she did pull the door shut. Actually, Marin did prop the door open with a rock when she went outside. She saw the shooter crash, then jumped the fence with his rifle. She ran back inside through that door, kicked out the rock, and then slammed it shut and called 911. However, the lock on the door, as we now know, did not work. To this day, she's still traumatized by the false accusations. Speaking with ABC's John Quinones, you can still see that she's trembling when she talks about that it's an incident five months later. I am suffering mentally of course emotionally i still don't sleep you think they're intentionally trying to make you the scapegoat yes yes that's exactly what they were trying to do what do you want to tell the director of the dps today macron your job was to sit there and watch that video and see what happened from beginning to end and you chose not to watch the whole video you chose to blame me. Is there any way they can make up for that? No, sir. By the way, Mary had only been working at Rob Elementary for a month when that shooting happened. And we've got some breaking news and apology from DPS coming just to us in the newsroom after this Quinones interview. Once again, they acknowledged that they accused the teacher of leaving the door propped open and then recanted. And in a statement today, they also added, quote, DPS corrected this error in public announcements and testimony and apologizes to the teacher and her family for the additional grief this has caused to an already horrific situation. Snake on the loose in Houston, and it's not a little snake. We're talking about a 12 to 15 foot python. The big guy slithering around some townhomes. Clayton Lee found out about the snake, warned the neighbors. He posted the picture on next door. He was actually warned about the snake from a neighborhood board member. Residents warned to hide their small pets like 19-year-old Dylan and even their small kids. It's very scary for anyone with uh, cats, kittens, uh, puppies, dogs, uh, very small children. I don't think it probably could get wide enough to swallow a child, but the research I've done says it might try. Whoa! Wildlife has been called. The problem? Wildlife can't find the wildlife. So people are getting a little anxious, as you can expect. By the way, you can't own a snake in Houston larger than eight feet. 
He is one of the top directors in Hollywood and a few choice words for Disney these days. Tim Burton of Beetlejuice fame and Edward Scissorhands has called Disney a quote, horrible big circus. He was speaking at a French film festival when he let the audience know how he really feels about Disney. He said he wanted to escape while he was working on live action version of Dumbo. He said Disney's main focus is Star Wars and Marvel and he doesn't have any interest in those franchises. He is working on a project for Netflix called Wednesday based on the Addams Family. Da -da -da -da. There you go. All right, now this may be hard to believe, but for the first time in the history of the Texas State Fair, it ended with a wedding. The happy couple, Melissa Valencia and Hayward Evans, they met seven years ago at the fair. They both worked for the mattress firm company and they were working at one of those pop-up shops there on the grounds. You may kiss your bride. It's crazy how it all came together. This place is kind of near and dear to our heart. Our dog's name is Dallas because we met in this city um, and we spend so much time traveling uh, across the country at fairs. So we figured why not celebrate our wedding here uh, doing what we love and with the people that we spend most of the time with. The first state fair wedding in the 120 year history of the fair. We're shocked that it's Aww. taken this long. Right? Believe that? Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want big techs like overseeing your wedding? <laughs> <laughs> Some tall wedding photos. I'm telling you. Years. Why would you not do that before? Yeah. That's oh, romantic. With a, dog back named, there. with a dog named Dallas. Dallas, yes. Yeah. How appropriate. Speaking of Dallas. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Cowboys won yesterday. Okay. There's some winners and some losers this weekend. Got you. Yeah. It, it, was yeah. a, it was a wedding gift for this couple. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> we'll be back with some highlights with RJ coming up. Sounds good. Uh, thank you very much, David. 909, 72 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up next. Good morning, I'm Max Massa. We are talking with Greater SATX, not only about a trip to Japan, but also local efforts getting people back to work and getting people better jobs. We're going to explain in just a bit. 913 Greater SATX is a local program working to attract companies to the region to help grow the ones that already call it home. They just came back from a special trip to Japan. Oh. Max Massey joins us live from the Oxbow building at the Pearl. Max, what was the point of the trip? Guys, it's exactly what you said. Growing more businesses here in San Antonio. Joined with Jenna. So, Jenna, tell us about Japan. What was the purpose? Well, the purpose is business development and basically marketing San Antonio to the world. Four days, over 22 meetings, and almost 100 businesses we interacted with. So we know about Toyota. What are other, some of the other businesses that you guys work with? Well, there are about 40 Japanese companies that have invested in San Antonio. So Toyota Gosei, uh, Aishin AW, Marichi just recently invested in Seguin. There are so many uh, for a variety of reasons, of course. All right, so make the pitch. If I'm an investor in Japan, make the pitch. Why San Antonio? First and foremost, talent, right? We're experiencing exponential population growth where Japan is experiencing decline. And then of course, competitive cost of doing business, affordable and reliable power and water. San Antonio is their place. Aside from Japan, there's a lot of international exposure here in San Antonio. What are some other countries you guys are working with? Canada, specifically Toronto, think about cybersecurity, of course Mexico, um, and the UK broadly. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation about air service connectivity there, and, and we continue to have conversation, conversations about business development. Now, Greater SATX not only bringing businesses in, but helping the ones here flourish. Also helping people get better jobs. You guys have SA Works. Tell us about the program. SA Works is all about providing the talent that our businesses need, those businesses that exist here today and those potential businesses into the future. They tell us what they need. SA Works provides uh, the, the training programs and connectivity to those programs so that San Antonians can uh, pursue these career pathways that, that pay well. All right, Jenna, thank you so much for your time this morning. If you guys have any questions about the trip to Japan, very jealous about, or about SA Works, we're going to have all that information on the news at noon and ksat.com. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Max. Yes, thank you. Taking a look outside with live cam. So I didn't see the raindrops this morning on the way to work, but when I went out to get my second dose of caffeine from my car, there were, you know, there it was on my car. There, there it was. Uh, it's it, great to see rain. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. And I, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think we're going to get a lot out of all. I mean, we have a couple chances today, but we're just not going to get a lot of rain out of it. What about tonight? Do we get a little bump there? Probably not. Okay. I mean, these storms are going to be racing. I do think there could be some heavier pockets of rain, but it, they're just going to be moving so fast that we're just not going to be able to pick up a whole lot. We were kind of hoping you'd tell us a little bit more. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. In Let's your forecast. It. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> Here we go. Uh, we've got some showers out around Gonzales and Lulee. The, these are light showers. This is the stuff we've been seeing this morning that uh, caused some of the wet roads here in San Antonio. This is pretty quickly pushing east. And you can see some of the heavier rain. Uh, you saw some of the yellows there around Kyle and Buda. That's moving off to the north and east. We still could see a couple more showers here for the next hour or so, but I think you're going to see a, a sort of a quieter trend as we head into the afternoon. Less cloud cover, too. We'll see the clouds start to go away and we'll get some sun, which will make for actually a pretty warm afternoon. As we go outside for you, we've got cloudy skies, still a few sprinkly showers out there. 72, dew point is at 70, and south southeasterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. In the case had 12 hour forecast, 77 at 11 o'clock, 79 noontime. You see the rain chance is really starting to taper off as we get to the lunch hour, and I think we get a break this afternoon. 88, the high temperature, and just that 10% chance of rain around the uh, dinner time hour. But as we get into tonight, then we bring the rain chances back up. So 8, 9 o'clock, that's when we could see our next round of showers. And this time, we see some storms mixed in here, a broken line of showers and storms, and winds begin to pick, pick up. So as we look at the water vapor, here's kind of what we're looking at, and it's, it's kind of a complicated setup. We've got the remnants of that hurricane, if you remember. That's kind of moved through, and that's what's giving us the showers this morning. Some lead energy out ahead of the initial, the, uh, heavy, uh, the stronger trough, and that's putting in some showers and storms across North Texas right now. Most of those are missing us to the north. And then the actual front itself, that comes through again later tonight. So let's look at the situation, and you can see there is, yes, a line of storms, but this is likely going to miss us to the north. And this is bringing some pretty good rain to places like uh, Abilene and then moving over towards Dallas, Fort Worth, and Oklahoma City. And then there's the front back here, and there's some showers and some snow showers associated with that. So let's go forward in time. Midday, storms probably to our north, then we're starting to see the clouds break a little bit. Here comes the front. And by 5 o'clock, still pretty quiet. It's around 10, 11 o'clock that we see storms rapidly develop right along the front. And this is where we could see some of our severe weather. It's going to be a close call for San Antonio. Uh, we may see these storms develop right over top of us or just to the east or just to the west. Uh, either way, there, there is a chance for some stronger storms, especially as these push east into our eastern counties. And then by 3 a.m., we're already starting to see clearing, and then the gusty winds kick in. By tomorrow morning, we've got clear skies. The severe risk tonight, it's uh, on a scale of 1 to 5 of 2. So it's lower end, but it is there. Gusty winds, isolated hail will be our main threats here, and we'll be watching it very closely tonight as those storms get going along the front. As far as rainfall potential, I said this earlier, not much. Everything's moving so quickly that here in San Antonio, a tenth to a quarter of an inch, that's about the best we can do. You will see higher totals off to our east. Some of our eastern counties may pick up a little bit more rain, but San Antonio, not much. And you go west, you may not get anything at all, unfortunately. Then the next story becomes the gusty winds behind this front by tomorrow morning. Look at some of these projected gusts. Now, I don't know that we go this high. This compu computer model is showing close to 70 mile per hour wind gusts around Bernie. I don't think it'll be that strong. But we could see some gusts 50, 50 plus, okay? And we've got to be really careful with that because that can do a little bit of damage. And as I said earlier, if you have Halloween stuff in your front yard, decorations, keep in mind these could be blown down the street with these kind of winds, even your trash can. So gusts 30 to even 40 here in San Antonio, it is going to be very windy tomorrow morning. Even through around 10 o'clock, we're still seeing some very strong wind gusts. It will take until the afternoon to see these winds subside some and then we'll see lighter winds as we head into Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. That also poses a fire threat. We've got a very high fire threat, San Antonio up to the north and east where things have been very dry. You get those very strong winds. Just another component to all of this. So a lot to look at here in the seven day forecast. 88 degrees today, 30% chance of showers, 40% tonight, that broken line of storms. 78 Tuesday, windy, 81 Wednesday, we get another chance, another front comes through Thursday night, Friday morning. This brings another small window for some showers and storms. And we get gusty ones again on Friday. Okay, and the wind's pretty strong tonight, so bring in the inflatables. Yes, for sure, or have them tied down really well. Tomorrow morning is going to be very, very windy. I like how you put it. You said they might end up in another county. In another county, the way Possible. things could go. Yeah. 920, 72 degrees. And before we head to break, a traffic alert to be aware of. Let's go ahead and check in with RJ right now. 
Yeah, thanks guys. Uh, checking in on this incident we had here on the near northeast side. So I'll go ahead and step out of the way. What we've been told right now is that there were eight, two 18 wheelers involved here. And as you can see from the trans guy traffic shot here, one of them has rolled over. The other one is on its side and there are several emergency crews in this area. As we take a look at our maps, you can see that this has caused significant backup in that area going all the way back to 410. Now trans guy just told me that uh, I-35 South from 410 has been closed. Exit ramps and entrance ramps are also closed down in that area. So one of the quick look at this, two 18 wheelers involved in this crash here on the near northeast side, I-35 at Benz Engelman. Just be careful if you are in the area. So we will continue to follow this on air and online and we will be right back. Good morning, San Antonio at night. ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, affects the nerve cells responsible for controlling voluntary muscle movement. A local woman living with the disease is hoping to shed some light on it. Laura Triplett wants to bring attention to health care inconsistencies she and others like her are facing. She told Lee Wallman she feels like she's been left out to dry since receiving her diagnosis. Kind of a fun story there. Easy, baby. It's okay. We will be together 29 years on two. We yeah. will be together 29 years on Tuesday. Almost three decades of laughter and love for the triplets. They tied the knot in Hawaii and always wanted to go back. Life had other plans. Basically, everything's on hold here. That's why the Christmas tree is still standing behind you. That's been there since 2019 when she was diagnosed. Laura, a vibrant yoga teacher, was diagnosed with ALS, a disease that breaks down your nerve cells, impacting the muscles and physical function. It's taken her ability to care for herself, even to speak. It's been been quite a, a long time since I've heard her voice. Uh, I miss it. 49-year-old Laura is able to communicate yes or no answers through blinking. Longer sentences come through her eye gaze. In her words, she shared what living with this disease is like. All ALS patients become prisoners in their failing bodies. For as long as this disease has been known, that there should be much more that can be done, but our numbers are not as great as other diseases because progression is so fast. There are several FDA-approved drugs to help slow the progression of ALS, but they're costly. I'll take anything they've got, but realistically, the 125000 it would take me about a year and a half of just straight salary to make that much money. On top of that, Laura needs a caregiver 24-7. Jack takes care of her when he's not working, and her mom cares for her the rest of the time. But because of qualifying issues, Laura cannot obtain a full-time nurse. Realistically, that's where we're going to end up. Um, there's no provision for that and any insurance that I know of. Her other option? Hospice care. They're going to be keeping her comfortable only. So that's not really a... That's not really any kind of life to offer. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Jack says they're using a company called Searchlight to help them find uh, a list of resources in one spot. And Laura says her goal is to make it to her 50th birthday next October. Time check right now, 927, 72 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including what you need to know before you head out to vote in the midterm elections. Plus this last weekend in particular was jam-packed with sports of all kinds. David and RJ will be back, back to recap this weekend's sports when we come back. Hi, welcome back. It's 930 looking outside with live cam. We're starting in the 70s today. Not as cool. A little rain drops here and there, but I hear nothing significant. Well, we're not going to pick up a ton of rain. I do think we'll see some thunderstorms as we get into tonight. It's just that they're not going to be very fruitful. We're talking about a tenth of an inch to maybe a quarter of an inch of rain. That's it at the end of the day. And we need a lot more than that, as you know. And we're looking at the uh, radar and satellite right now. We've had a few showers work through San Antonio. Those are pushing east. We've got a new line of showers, broken line of showers and storms that are developing. This likely misses San Antonio to the north, but places in the hill country like Fredericksburg and Kerrville could get a few light showers out of this. The heavier stuff with this line is up to the north. And then it's behind that with a cold front that we get another line of showers and storms coming up tonight. That one probably does move through, but again, it's not going to produce all that much rain. Temperature wise, 72 at the airport, 71 Kerrville, 73 Uvalde, 70 in Rock Springs, 75 in Gonzales. So it is a warm, humid start. And a little closer look here at Bear County, low 70s, cloudy skies at the moment. Now, skies will clear some too, I think, this afternoon. 
with a little bit of sun, it'll push temperatures up to some pretty warm levels. Pollen count, molds are low, ragweed is low, so no big deal there. We'll see what uh, molds do tomorrow. Here's your case that 12 hour forecast if you're planning out your day and there's a lot going on. It does change really hour by hour, so this forecast is important. 40% chance at 10 o'clock, 30% chance at 11 a.m., and then I think rain chances really taper off noontime. That's when we start to see some of that sun. 88 degrees at 4 o'clock when you're picking up the kids this afternoon should be fine. 87 at 5 p.m. It's tonight where we start to see the showers and storms return to the forecast. 30% chance at 8 p.m., 40% chance at 9 p.m. That is also a window in which we can see some strong storms. Severe weather is possible tonight. We're going to talk more about that and some very, very gusty winds coming up tomorrow, guys. Thank you, Justin. If your commute takes you in the 41035 area near Bamsey right now, we've got a big old mess. We've got a fleet of vehicles out there now trying to make sense of this and uh, figure out the best way to clear up not one but two big rigs involved in this. This is 410 to 35 South. Two of those giant King Kong wreckers are now on scene, but uh, they're going nowhere quick as far as cleanup goes. That ramp is still closed. RJ's here. He's keeping an eye on for us as well. And this weekend was full of sports action, everything from football, basketball, and baseball. A whole bunch of stuff going on. David and RJ joined us now to go over some of the highlights, starting with Daft Prescott's return Ooh, for the Dallas we Cowboys. We would love to chit-chat with y'all, but we ain't got time because we got a lot of winners to talk about. Understood. <laughs> and a loser or two, but let's get yeah. to the winners. How about the Cowboys this weekend? Yeah. Dak Prescott coming back yesterday. Not bad uh, after being uh, off for, what, five weeks? Yeah, yeah, a little bit rusty to start, David, yeah. as the Cowboys got off to a little bit of a slow start here, taking on the Detroit. Lines here at home, but as you just mentioned, Dak had not played in a while, so got to lean on the defense here. And I know Ooh, that Mike earlier was, was very it? upset about this call. Was it? Was <laughs> it a uh, interception? Sure, yeah, it, it was. was. <laughs> It was because it, cause it <laughs> didn't over, get overruled or anything, so it was an interception. Yeah, the Cowboys were kind of down there at the beginning, but then they then they came back and here's a second interception. Mm -hmm. Now Jordan Lewis, here's what's bad about that. Yeah, yeah. Him right there. he's got some weird foot injury. I, they call it uh, what, what they call it Liz, Liz Frank. Frank? Yes. What is, I yeah. have no Liz idea Frank. what that is. I think it's the top of the foot. Yeah, yeah. broken bone. Why don't they just but say he's got a foot injury? He broke a bone <laughs> and he's going to be out maybe for the rest you of know, the season. Look at that defense. Look at that. Yeah. Look at he just took it from him. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Yeah, and that really spurred the. Cowboys here to this win here 24 to 6 over Detroit taking care of business yep. in Dax return Dak through for 207 a 207 touchdown, touchdown yeah, no no con picks con control the game what yes, have we always no said picks. no picks 19 no to 25 picks. so that's a pretty close, good game for Dak Cowboys <laughs> had five turnovers yesterday mm -hmm. yeah that's a pretty big that's a pretty big deal so um, they play Chicago next week here's the here's the schedule mm -hmm. so big win for them although New York and Philadelphia keep winning so the, you know they're still behind at five and two I think yeah, New York ended up pulling that one out yesterday, so they, they only have one they loss. Did. Yeah, so, yeah. The right. Giants are still ahead of them in the standings right now. So there you go. Sunday noon. <laughs> Texans lost yesterday, so we're going to go on to something else. Hey, speaking wow, of Houston, okay, here so we we'll go. go on to the Astros. <laughs> no, we're going to well, go first. First, I'm sorry. Home. Stay UTSA, local, yeah. right, right yeah. down there. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie has something to cheer about, so yes, that, that's why you. we put this in there, just because they won big and stuff. We got to give her something to cheer about. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get the sad stuff um, in a second. You know, David, UTSA, I mean, they are in these nail biting games almost every week and every single time. Frank Harris comes through for them again through a touchdown, a game winning touchdown with 15 seconds left in this game for the Roadrunners to beat North Texas. Well, this, yeah, this is the game. I mean, this 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 might be the conference mm -hmm. championship right here that they that they just sealed with that uh, with that touchdown there at the end. So Frank Harris, man, that. That, that guy can play. He can. He I can think he's one of the top play. five yeah. quarterbacks to, in total yardage in total this yardage, season. Yeah. And that was so. the play that got them into the red zone. Oscar Cardenas making a big catch. But, uh, yeah, Frank Harris just getting it done as usual. I think this is the game winner right, right here. Look at this. Thing. Watch his catch. Mm. Ooh, yeah. getting up. <laughs> Kid got some ups right there. That's great stuff. Love that. Love it. Love it. Mm. UTSA, here's what we don't love. Sorry, Steph. Yeah, yeah. this is going to be rough. Ah. Mm. Take it out. So No, we're going to show this. Because Texas was up the yes. first half, going into the second half. Mm -hmm. They scored three points in the second half. Yes. OSU scored 17 yeah. in the second I half. So that's know. not good. Including 14 in the fourth quarter to take care of business there in Stillwater. Again, you mentioned, David, yeah. a double-digit lead mm -hmm. for Texas. Could mm -hmm. not hold on. Quinn Ewers nope. made a couple of big mistakes late in this game. 
and uh, tough loss. I think this may have cost uh, UT a shot at the conference. Yeah, because they've got two losses in conference now, one to Tech and now one to OSU, so they're going to have to have a lot of help down the stretch. They still got to play like TCU. Kansas State. Kansas yeah. State, yeah, so this going to be uh, this going to be tough for them. So, um, sorry, Jeff. But, right. you know, all right, thanks. That's, okay. thanks. You'll be all right, because we're going to get some You didn't even mention sport. A&M, though. Yeah. I, we don't want to talk did, A&M. Did yeah. I say A&M yeah, lost? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Justin, man, I, I messed with Justin today. Justin's off the hook for Justin's today. off the hook today. Hey, how about those Astros? Man, how about those They Astros? have not lost in the playoffs. Undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to their fourth World Series in the last mm -hmm. six years mm -hmm. after what they did. They swept the Yankees last night. What a bullpen. And they, just, and they just continue to torment the Yankees. That's, that's, what's, that's what's fun about it. Right I mean, there. the Yankees cannot and? be Houston to save their lives. I'm no. not complaining. Definitely not complaining. No. But uh, they were down last night, battled back. Lance McCullers finally got things going so midway through this game. And, uh, man, the Astros, they just continue, continue to come up clutch. But, yeah. As Mark said, great pitching, great bullpen, and very timely hitting. Yeah, a timely home run every now and then. So uh, yeah. once again, they're going off to play the Philadelphia Phillies, who kind of surprised a lot of people that Ooh. they would be coming out yeah. of the NL yeah. after the Braves were in it. I tell you, and you had the, the Dodgers, uh, the Padres. The yeah. Dodgers had the best league, had the best record in the league at 111 wins. Yeah, and they got wiped out in like the first round, or if you yeah. want to call it a round. Well, remember, they, uh, Philly yeah. brought in Bryce Harper to do yeah. just this, and here we are. And here yep. we are. Yep. Yep. So, the Phillies so. are hot right now, but a uh, great point there. The Astros have not lost and uh, getting ready to hopefully bring home that second championship during this run. It's However, they, they, they pointed out that the last two teams, there there's two teams that, that didn't lose a game and made it to the World Series, uh -oh. and they both lost the World Series. So. <laughs> oh, but man. we won't say that. <laughs> we're, we're not going to. Hey, you got to break the streak. So the Astros yeah. might as well break that yeah. streak. And, and, and Altuve is starting to hit. He looks great. So yeah, he started. He started Jordan, to get, get those a guys, uh, yeah. Pena, those so. guys are all playing big time ball right now. All Let's right. talk about the young guns. Yes. So yeah, Justin easy, Horn has been least. saying all along <laughs> that they're going to shock the world. Well, so far they pretty much shocked everybody. Yeah. Everybody right here. How about those Spurs? Friday night against Indiana, they pull off a win. big win Friday night, and then yeah. just back to backs on the road, mm -hmm. back to backs, and then Saturday night, boom against Philadelphia. What's yeah, wrong with Philadelphia? Uh, well, How about those Spurs? I know, and, and they've definitely surprised me. I mean, you look at what they're doing right now. They got five guys in double digits, led by Keldon Johnson. Yeah. This would be a big season for him. Devin Vassell, this is the guy that I think a lot of Spurs fans are really looking forward. It's his sort of development. So good stuff there. Trey Jones, Jakob. Man, they're playing pretty well. What was one of the biggest problems that the Spurs had last year? Oh, amongst many. See, amongst what many? was one of them? Uh, scoring, winning, <laughs> yeah. rebounding. Mark! Yeah, turnovers. What? No. <laughs> turnovers. They couldn't hit a three. They, could, they, uh, could, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't hit a three to save their soul, right? So. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey. Sorry. You know, you're just pointing out some facts. Yeah. It was all that stuff. So on, uh, on Friday night, mm -hmm. They had a 54% shooting night from three-point range. Yeah. Josh They're Richardson hot. was like, I don't know, four of six or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Josh six, Richardson yeah. been yeah, playing great. He had a huge well. night. And then Saturday night, they shot 42% from three-point range. So shot they're hitting the, the threes, which is, which is one of the things that they didn't do very <laughs> um, amongst several that they didn't do very good. Yeah. good. But, you know, their veterans have really stepped up, which is what's going to have to carry them oh, yeah. through the first part of the oh, yeah. season is these young guys. You know, um, Jeremy Sohan is, is Sohan he's, starting. He's starting. Yeah, so he's, good. he's still trying to figure run. out where he's supposed to be and what he's supposed to be doing, but he's getting there. Well, so, did you see all the posts all, all weekend? People were like, oh, well, they're not tanking yet. Yeah. 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 That'll be an interesting uh, debate. Well, for yeah, they, they, you know, there's, there's, they got in Minnesota back to back tonight. And then yeah. Wednesday night, they're in Minnesota for both of those. We're yeah. working the schedule. And then Friday, they come Hurry home off. to take on the get, Chicago Bulls. Get so to we'll know see. Minnesota very well in the yeah. next week. Yeah. 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 Then I Minnesota again. So it's like a playoff so. series or something. Yeah. Something okay, weird nice. right there. Oof. But how, hey, they're two you think we got through everything, David? Yeah. They're proud of you guys. We did it. We did it. We Mission did it. accomplished. I mean, we have to omit the Texans and the Aggies, but you know what? We did That's it. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. On behalf of our producer, <laughs> Alex, she's yes. stunned. I know. Yeah. I know. We're, we're, yes. you're, you're, you guys oh, well, we can go on if she would like. <laughs> No, no, oh, no. She said no, no, no. Okay. She said no, no, no. no. Okay. Yeah, more. Yeah, if we could see her, it'd be a finger wag. Uh, RJ, David, thank you very much. 940, 72 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And when we come back, we are talking about Muertos Fest, which is taking place this weekend. What you need to know if you plan on going out there after the break. Welcome back. 
944. Halloween is coming up, but so is Muertos Fest happening this weekend at Hemisphere. It is San Antonio's largest day of the Dead Festival, and this year it's celebrating its 10th anniversary. There will be live music, art vendors, special events for children and families, plus around 80 altars created for those to honor those who have passed away. Muertos Fest will be on Saturday and Sunday at Hemisphere. The hours and address are on your screen right now. This is a free event and it's open to everyone. If you can't make it out, you can catch our primetime special, which airs Sunday at 8 p.m. right here on KSAT, KSAT.com and our KSAT Plus app. Scan the QR code on your screen right now for all the info and much, much more. Sounds like quite a party. Yeah, and after the roller coaster weather week we'll have, it should be pretty decent over the weekend. I, it looks that way. I think the weather's gonna cooperate, which is great news. We do have a lot going on in the seven day forecast, yeah, though, a do. couple fronts and one that arrives tonight. Let's start first with the radar and satellite. And by the way, looking at some of the trans guide shots, the sun is starting to punch through now. So we are getting some sun out there, which will warm, warm us up. Uh, there we see a line of showers and storms. So this is kind of the initial line, if you will. We had some showers this morning that made for some wet roads, didn't pick up all that much rain. And this is kind of the first line of showers and storms that will move through, likely missing San Antonio to the north. But some places across the whole country could pick up a little bit of rain out of this. And then you've got some heavier rain as you go up I-35 towards Dallas Fort Worth. Let's go outside for you. And yes, the sun is trying to shine through in a few spots. 72 at the airport. This graphic still showing some rain. The rain for the most part has ended there. Dew point at 70 south southeast chilly winds at about 10 miles per hour. And here's the setup. So we're starting with 10 a.m. here. You see that first line that pushes east but likely misses San Antonio to the north. So by noontime, we're left with partly cloudy skies. Skies will be clearing and maybe a few showers. And then as we head into the afternoon, things actually completely clear out. We'll get some sun, warm temperatures, and here comes our front. As the front starts to interact with some of the moisture, we'll see a line of showers and storms develop sort of rapidly. And the big question will be, where do these develop? If they develop just west of San Antonio, we'll get some storms coming through town. If they develop right over us, we'll get a little bit of rain, but they move along pretty quickly. And if they develop just to our east, we can miss out on this altogether. The hope is that we at least get a little bit of rain out of this. And then we'll have to watch for the threat for some severe weather. So any one of these storms could be strong to severe just based on what we have going on in the atmosphere. And those very quickly push east through our eastern counties. And so by three o'clock, the entire area has essentially cleared out and then we'll see some clear skies tomorrow morning, but then winds become a big deal. Rain chances, 20% chance noontime. We see the rain chances drop off this afternoon and then pick back up tonight. So 8 p.m. through around midnight. That's the time frame we will be watching. Of course, meteorologist Adam Kasky will be here tonight to keep you updated with uh, anything that does pop up on the radar. Severe weather risk. We mentioned that this area in darker pink on a scale of one to five, that's a two. So scattered, severe storms, gusty winds and hail would be the main threats. Okay, gusty winds probably the biggest one of all as these storms uh, push through and that threat is gonna be I-35 and basically points east. As far as rainfall goes, not much. Tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch, I think here in town. And of course that's completely dependent on where those storms set up. But you go west of town, there's not much rain at all. You go east, you'll see some bigger totals, maybe even up to an inch, some of our far eastern counties and uh, the wind that becomes the next issue tomorrow morning. We've got the front that comes through and by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Look at some of these wind gusts. Now this is just one computer model and I think this probably overdoes it a little bit, but it's showing wind gusts up over 60 miles per hour in some spots. Uh, narrow corridor here around northwestern Bear County, Kendall into Kerr County and Bandera County. We'll see if that transpires, but regardless, I think we get some gusts over 40 miles per hour. And as we said earlier, if you don't have those Halloween decorations tied down or you don't bring them in, they could be gone tomorrow morning. So this is something you have to consider. And then by 10 a.m., we're still getting some gusty winds, gusts close to 40 here around San Antonio. And then by midday and into the afternoon, the winds start to die down and we'll see less wind by tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night, which will eventually lead to some chilly temperatures as we head into Wednesday morning, 49 to be exact. So 88 degrees today. There's a chance of showers and the chance of storms tonight. 78 Tuesday, the big story there is the gusty winds in the morning. 81 Wednesday, 80 on Thursday. We get some increasing clouds late in the day. Another chance of storms with uh, a front Thursday night and the Friday morning. Another small window. I don't know that we'll get a lot of rain out of this. 
and then 79 on Friday and windy and it does shape up to be a pretty good weekend. So some opportunities for rain here over the next four or five days, guys. We'll take it. Thank you, Justin. Polls are open as of less than two hours ago here in Bear County as early voting gets underway for the midterm elections. So that takes place through November 4th and you can go to you can go and look at these hours on your screen. The polls will be open today through Friday. Polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, you can vote from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Sunday from noon to 6. Next week, polls will be open a little longer in the evenings. They'll be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. next Monday through Friday. And a reminder, the important dates to keep on your calendar. We already mentioned early voting, but uh, also happening this week, a deadline to apply for a mail ballot. The last day to apply Friday. Then, of course, Election Day is November 8th. And if you forget any of this information, don't worry. It's all on kset.com. Just click on the Vote 2022 section under the News tab. We have a list of all the polling locations in Bear County and a look at a sample ballot before you cast your vote. Speaking of sample ballots, I studied one earlier, and I have to go back because there are so many races, so many people. Massive this year. I have some more homework to do. Yeah, we all do. <laughs> 9.50 right now, 72 degrees. We'll be right back. We are one week away from Halloween. A popular neighborhood app has a helpful tool to find the best areas to trick or treat at. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, we're going to be speaking with a representative from the company about this neat feature and find out what's new with it this year and how it can help families have a fun and safe Halloween. Don't miss that interview tomorrow right here on GMSA at 9. Plus. That's pretty much every day for producer Dylan <laughs> Collins, uh, and that's our producer Joy and producer Carl. Some of our morning crews uh, sent out to SeaWorld to check out Hallow's Scream, and you don't want to miss what Dylan and, and the others found. Nah, I don't want to miss it either. It's part of our Haunted Adventure series as we get ready for Halloween. We're going to be sharing spooky stories all week on GMSA, so be sure to tune in. Heads up, the situation uh, continues right now. The King Kong wreckers are about to uh, upright uh, one or two of, or both of those big rigs. Uh, this is at uh, 410 on the ramp to 35 South. They are making very slow progress out there. The ramp is still closed. The uh, big uh, King Kong wreckers are, uh, are at it right now, trying to make, uh, make that go away. And you see the sun's trying to pop out, guys, so we are starting to see see uh, the sun pop out and that'll continue into the afternoon so uh, it temperatures warm up eventually into the upper 80s 30 percent chance of showers really this morning it's the focus tonight is going to be on some of those storms uh, this evening 40 percent chance there could be a couple of strong storms mixed in there and then the other big story becomes the gusty winds tomorrow morning and this is going to be a big issue we could see some gusts close to 50 miles per hour if not a little bit higher so be aware of that storms tonight wind tomorrow. Those are the two big stories. Don't forget your lottery ticket if you're feeling lucky. Powerball is up to 610 million. That would be the eighth largest in Powerball history. The $610 million prize, the cash value of about $292 million. No ticket matched all six numbers on Saturday, so the drawing is set for tonight. Good luck, everybody. Bye, guys.